Hey, it's Gate Captain. Um, so a lot of you who have been watching my channel for the past however long will know that I've been using Lua as my primary means of creating Dynasty Warriors mods. So, if you want to know how I do that, here's how. You need PCSX2 with your Dynasty Warriors game of choice. I'm doing Dynasty Warriors 4. And... Cheat Engine. You have to have Cheat Engine. That's how I do this. There are probably some other uh, cheat devices that work as well, but Cheat Engine is my favorite one. So, and I'm gonna use Gate Captain to demonstrate this instead of Chow Yu. So, let's say, oh, you wanna make, you wanna make a script that just allows you to press a button and instantly get full Muso, which, you know, is cheating, but I'm not gonna judge you if you wanna cheat the game like that. Well, you can do it with Cheat Engine's Lua script. You could also just use a PNAT script like a normal person, but let's say you're not normal, like me. Let's use a Lua script instead. So to create a Lua script, you need to go into the memory viewer and either press Control A or go into tools and go to auto assemble. This is where this is where you write scripts. This is all you have. This is all you need. But the first thing you have to do is make sure that Cheat Engine knows that this is a Lua script. And you do that by putting these two brackets here. And then use dollar sign Lua. And if it shows up in white, then you'll know you did it right. Now we need to set the function. So we'll call this local function. And we can just call it some like tutorial. And make sure you close it out. Um, but before we, before we actually do anything to this, you want to also make sure you have an enable and a disable section of the script. But we're not going to put anything in here yet. First thing I want to do is make the function. So we'll go ahead and get started on that. The first thing I'm going to do is make some parameters, make some variables here. Um, and we're, remember, we're trying to write the max Muso value into our Muso value. But the problem with this is the max Muso value and the Muso value use two completely different metrics. So 240 on the max Muso value is much more than 240 in the current Muso value. But I happen to know that it's just 16. The tr current Muso value is just 16 times the max Muso value. So if you just take 240, you multiply that by 16. Whoops, I did that wrong. Times 16. That's that should be the value that gives you max Muso, and it's different for depending on how leveled up your characters are, what items you are using, and all that stuff. So that's why I'm doing this. So it works for all characters. So the first thing we're going to do is set these variables. We'll do P, and I always start with P or S depending on whether I'm using player 1 or player 2. Player 1 is P, player 2 is S, player er, things that have nothing to do with player 1 or 2 just have B in them or nothing. So we'll call this P max so and we'll call that in order to set this parameter, we need to read a value from this table. And you can do that with the scripts from, or not the scripts, the functions from this website. This website lists all of the Lua functions that work with Cheat Engine, but we're not interested in most of these. We're only interested in the read 
and right part. So, and the function you have to use differs depending on what your value type is. So we're working with both 2-byte and 1-byte value. So we'll be using read byte and read small integer and also write byte and write small integer and all that stuff. We'll put our p max muso value. This is supposed to be just one value. So we're going to call this as just reading our max muso value. But remember, we're trying to write that times 16 into our muso value. So what we'll do, we'll put parentheses around this and just multiply that by 16 with Lua. And that, that should be good. So, uh, next we're just going to make the actual if-then statement. And it should just be one if-then statement because we're not, we're not making anything complicated here. And the idea is once this value equals whatever it is when you press L3, which is 253 in this case, so if read, oh, oh my goodness, I made a big mistake. This is supposed to be read small integer. Because remember, it's a two byte value. If you have anything bigger than 255, you try using a one byte value, it's not gonna work. So make sure that this is used, read small integer if it's a two byte value. So if read byte and this is our value for pressing L3, which is the button I'm going to use for this. You can use different ones if you want, if you really want to recreate this bad script. And so if that equals 253, and if you just type a number in here, it's going to read it in he uh, decimal not hex. If you want it to be read in hex, you have to put 0x and then your value here, which in this case is FD, but I'm not, I don't use hex, so we'll just 253. So, basically, in English, this is, if you press L3, then it executes everything between this if and this end statement. And all, all we're going to do is we're going to write small integer, which is two bytes. We're going to write into the MUSO value, the MUSO address, I mean. And make sure that you are putting parentheses around the, or not parentheses. Well, yeah, use parentheses and quotations around the address. But this is different than read byte. Instead of doing the right small integer and then coming out here and then putting equal sign uh, p max muso, what you actually want to do is just put a put a comma after the quotations, which is kind of weird, still in the parentheses, outside of the quotations, and then put the value you want to write to it. And, I mean, yeah, that's all there is to this script. There's, there's nothing, there's nothing more to it. However, it, if I just go ahead and add to cheat table and then turn it on, it's going to do nothing because we haven't put anything here in the enable or disable part. So let's go ahead and just do that right now. In order to make the function work all the time, you can't just put execute function tutorial here. It's like on enable, just run the script. Because then it won't work because it only executes once and then it stops. But we want this to always be running. And to do that on Sheet Engine, you need to create a timer. 
So we'll call this tutorial timer. Go ahead and copy that name. Equals create timer nil. You're still not done though. You have to set all the parameters to it. And to do that, you put the timer's name, add a period, and then there are three parameters we have to set. So on timer, and this, you have to change this to the name of the script. So for every interval, which we'll set here, dot interval, and the interval is in milliseconds, so we'll just do one millisecond. So currently we have a timer that every millisecond executes this function here, the tutorial function. And the last thing you have to do is enable it. And when it's disabled, you don't want it to be running, right? So all you have to do for that is create a statement. If the tutorial timer is running, then destroy it. Oops. Dot destroy. That's how you end the timer. Stop it from running. Okay, so this should be the full script. It, it's not a difficult script to make, I think. You can go ahead and name it Tutorial Script. We'll turn it on. We'll see if it works. There you have it. I just pressed L3, and it works. And if you hold L3, of course, it uh, it just continues writing it, which isn't great, but I'm not going to spend any time bug fixing. This was just a sample tutorial script. And yeah, that's really all there is to it. And don't be fooled by the simplicity of this one script. It gets really complicated eventually. And also I should demonstrate that since the script is turned off, I'm spamming L3 and nothing's happening. So, anyway, don't be fooled. The scripts, they get way more complicated. So, for example, and this one won't work in demolition mode. The code troops follow script, which, I mean, if you really want to copy this whole thing, go ahead, be my guest. But it won't work without the auto target script either, which I'm just going to go ahead and turn that on. So, yeah, and it, it was. It doesn't take too long to make, but I have to use notes to remember what everything does. Because without registering symbols, it's difficult to know what each address does and what each value does after a long time of having written the script. But yeah, and this one in particular uses both autoassemble and Lua. So it's pretty complicated, but it works pretty much flawlessly. And I'll just go ahead and demonstrate it. Let's say I want to have four clones of the player fighting alongside me. Well, we'll just do that. And it doesn't matter who I pick because I'm going to be gate captain. There you have it. Yeah. You could use it for a lot of stuff. Lua is very, very handy for just making scripts like this. They just do exactly what you want them to do. Uh, you can do more with this than you can with P-Natches. And... Uh, assembly all by itself and that's also how I made the tag team script which I'll go ahead and just 
Prince read that. See? Press L2. Changes. I should probably hit the try again button to better show it when there's only two gate captains here. Okay, well, we're to Yao Chan now. Yeah, this is just a Lewis script. Lewis pretty powerful. So now you, hopefully you know how to use it. You can make some pretty cool stuff with it. And yeah. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you make something really cool with it.